Hello, hello, and welcome to a little video about the recursive and explicit formula for arithmetic sequences. First, let's look at the recursive formula. The recursive formula goes as such. To find the term that we're looking for, a sub n, we have to add the common difference to the previous term. That might sound super familiar because we were actually doing this without the formula for the past couple of days. So you were using a formula without even knowing that it was a formula. For example, let's say we have these four terms, negative two, negative nine, negative 16, and negative 23, and we wanted to find the fifth term. Well, this is the first term, the second, the third, and the fourth. In order to find the fifth term, we need to find the fourth and add the common difference to it. Well, the fourth term in this case is negative 23. The difference, well, to get from negative 2 to negative 9 is subtracting 7. So I add our common difference, which is minus 7. And I believe that's what we have worked out here. Yes, beautiful. Negative 23 plus our negative 7 gives negative 30 for our fifth term of the sequence. Now, this is a good formula unless we're asked something like this. What if I want to find the 11th term and all I have is one, two, three, four terms? Well, that means I have to find the 10th term. So first, let's identify the pattern. Um, we're adding 18 every single time between these terms. So uh, let's keep adding 18 until we get to the 10th term. I'm going to, or at least I'm going to try to zoom in. Excuse me, computer. Will you be kind? Oh, I thank you, computer. Okay. So, all right. Fifth term. So I'm going to add 18 to 179. I get 197. And then 197 plus 18 is 215. 215 plus 18, 233. 233 plus 18 is 251. Comedy's at 8, okay. Couple more, we're almost there. 251 plus 18 is 269. That's my ninth term. And my tenth term plus 18 is 287. Okay, so to find the term I want, I need to use the previous term and add the common difference. Okay, so we're trying to find the fifth term, which means I need to use, I know that that's a funky looking equal sign, but that's fine. I use the fourth term and I add the common difference, which is 18. So I don't know why I said fifth and fourth. Ah, it's because of the example beforehand. We're looking for the 11th. Whoopsie doopsie. So a sub 11 and the previous term is a sub 10. My bad. <clears throat> Anyways, the 11th term will be our 10th term, 287 plus 18 more. So our 11th term is 305. So that can get pretty tedious, especially if you only have the first couple terms. What if I asked you to find the 20th term? That would be crazy doing it this way. That's why we have the explicit formula. The explicit formula helps us calculate any term, as long as we have the first term and the common difference. So let's put that into play. Um, we're going to use um, this word problem that we had about Rico. Where's Rico's word problem? Uh, Rico is contributing to the centipedes baseball team based on the number of home run hits. So we want to find the 35th home run, or how much money Rico will contribute after 35 home runs. So let's check it out. I'm going to attempt to zoom in. If it lets me, excuse me, computer, 
Uh, will you, there, that's, that's so kind of you. Thank you, computer. Okay, so our explicit formula is as such, I'm going to write the formula first, and then I'll plug everything in. All right, so we are looking for 35 home runs. That is our N. So, A sub 35 equals, A sub 1 is our first term. Our first term in the sequence from previous was 125. The common difference we found was 18. Each home run, $18. And then we do 35 minus 1 for the previous term. This 35 and that 35 are directly related. The common difference is over here. And of course, our first term is right there. And that is all coming from that same problem from before. Let's simplify. A sub 35, if it lets, why aren't you drawing, computer? There we go. Equals 125 plus, the first thing that we simplify are a parentheses. So 35 minus one is 34. The next step after parentheses is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply 18 times 34. And I get $612. Now that I'm finished multiplying, I can add. And we can say after 35 home runs, Rico donates 125 plus 612 is 700. $37. Let's do another one. Well, let's say um, we have 48 home runs. Let's calculate how much RICO will contribute then. Our formula is still the same one. It's the explicit formula for arithmetic sequences. Here it is. I like rewriting it so I can see where I'm plugging everything in. Okay, so 48 home runs. That means A sub 48. Our first term was the first amount Rico donated, so that's $125. D is our common difference. We added 18 each time to go from one number to the next. And N is our 48, so 48 minus 1. Now, why do we do 48 minus 1? Why, that's a good question. Because the first term plus 47 terms gives us 48. So 48th term is the first term plus 47 more. So first term plus the pattern applied to 47 more terms. Okay. Um, let's calculate. First, I have to multiply. So 18 times 47 gives us 846. And then we can conclude by adding, after 48 home runs, Rico will donate $971. Let's do one more. Three is a great number. Three examples, three is good. All right, so it's gonna be 86 home runs. I'm going to write out the formula first. And when we did this in class, I had you try filling it in yourself, but of course you can always pause the video and try filling it in yourself. Um, since you know, you're watching it on YouTube, it's not live. All right, let's fill this in. We are looking for 86 home runs. So we take the first amount plus 18, our common difference, times the previous amount of terms, which really means to find our 86th term, we're adding the first term with 18, which is our pattern, times 85 more terms. 
So first term plus 85 more gives us 86 terms. Okay, um, I'm going to multiply 18 by 85. 18 times 85 gives us 1,530. And now I can finish up by adding 125 and 1,530. Rico donates $1,655 after 86 whole months. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me or whoever your teacher is know. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.